I'm Brenda Earl Stokes, the owner and creator of Piano Skills for Singers, the only online piano course for singers created by a singer. So I've gotten some really terrific feedback on this quickie series and I wanted to give another little quickie tutorial on incorporating improvisation at the piano. Now, I know this says for singers, but I've actually heard from a lot of um, classically trained piano players who are actually kind of getting in on the action. So um, definitely don't let the for singers hinder you because uh, this is something that everyone can use. So I think improvisation is a really great way to develop some deeper skills at the keyboard. Improvisation is something wonderful really to work on at the keyboard or in any capacity you're working in musically. Not only does it help you to connect to a deeper place creatively, but it's also a great place to go to explore your ear training, to explore harmony, and it's great to develop some more technique on your instrument. So for today, we're gonna to do a little improvisation exercise that I love to try with my students. And it's inspired by the classic, beautiful piece by Eric Satie that's called Gymnopédie. And if, the Gymnopédie are often described as the most relaxing piece of piano music. So in the Gymnopédie, um, there's a repeated pattern in the left hand. It's just two chords, one chord after the other, and then a melody that comes in afterwards. So just have a quick listen. Now, I'm sure it sounds familiar to you in some capacity. What's lovely about this particular um, piece is that it's something we can borrow from to create our own idea. So if you would like, we could, you could use that as your ostinato or an ostinato being our... So if you wanted to, you could just take those two chords um, and play them over and over and over as an ostinato. An ostinato is a repeated pattern. Okay, or I'm going to give you something that fits a little easier in the hand. And so let's get started. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play um, what's going to sound like a G major 7 chord. So I'm playing a G and then I'm going to play a B and an F sharp. And I'm going to do it in 3-4 time just to keep it a little more like the Genape D. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. So try that a couple of times. One, two, three. Very nice. Two, three. One, two, three. Great. Now the next shape that I'm gonna make is going to be kind of a D chord, D over F sharp. And so I'm gonna play F sharp, and then I'm gonna play A and E. So it's gonna have a little bit of a A, ish kind of sound, but it's going to still have that same kind of watercolory impressionist -y kind of sounds, which is going to give us some freedom and some flexibility as to what we play in our right hand. So, so the way that I'm going to structure this is I'm going to do two bars of the G shape, and then I'm going to do this F sharp thing. up with a little pedal if you like. So that's this, the ostinato pattern that you're going to repeat. It's always good once you've got it nice and settled is to use the metronome a little bit so that you really are in time, um, you know, modify it if you want, but you want to keep things nice and steady as much as you can. So we're going to improvise over top of that repeated pattern and we're actually going to use the notes for the D major scale. Um, 
Or you could think of it being the G major scale with a C sharp in it, okay? That's called the Lydian scale, the G Lydian scale. Um, okay, and that's gonna give us a little bit more of like an ethereal feel, which is gonna be really nice. So let's try it. Again, you can start by just playing quarter notes or just, just half notes or dotted half notes just to let things ring and sort of follow and see how much of this you can do. It may take a little while for your left hand to get used to playing this re repeated pattern because when the right hand starts to play the left hand might get messed up a little bit but just take your time and go slowly. So let's let me just show you some things that you can try. So we'll start with the left hand ostinato. One, two, three, one, two, three. that C sharp sounds like. Great job. So as you can see with this little exercise, we create this beautiful meditation just using two chords. Now, I chose to be in 3-4 time and to use these chords that are, are major sounding and a little bit kind of watercolory um, and to use the Lydian mode, but you could really create any ostinato you want. You could be in 4-4 time, you could be in minor, you could choose two particular chords that you really like, two chords that sound like these two, like they're related to each other, or you could choose chords that aren't. So this is a really fun exercise to do to get you to be not only developing some uh, independence between the hands, but also to just kind of explore and move around the keyboard a little bit. It's a great way to get yourself centered for practicing. Um, it's a great way to get yourself kind of more tuned to your creativity. And I think it's something that you'll really enjoy adding to your practice routine and to the routine of your students. If you enjoyed this little tutorial, make sure you take a quick minute and subscribe so you can get the first notifications of when I create more content. I also encourage you to go to my website, www.pianoskillsforsingers.com, for more great and useful information and to learn more about my online courses. Thanks for being with me today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I'll see you next time.